Yes, I am aware that Nintendo announced Metroid Prime 4 and another Metroid 2 remake. I am very excited. Stop leaving me comments about it. Last episode, we started looking at the video games licensed off the Transformers movies. Transformers the game was decent, but had horrendous controls on the Wii, and Revenge of the Fallen, or at least the inferior half-assed Wii release, was horrible. So now let's take a look at the third game, Transformers Dark of the Moon. Okay, correction, Transformers Dark of the Moon Stealth Force Edition. Oh, I am so boned. We've covered several times on this channel how the Wii often got blatantly half-assed inferior ports of mainstream games, so if the Wii port is specifically marketed as its own special version, it's telling you up front that you're about to get screwed sideways. And the screws did indeed go sideways! I couldn't make this up if I tried. You spend the entire game locked in your vehicle form. You can't transform into your robot form in this Transformers game, you never transform! Instead, you turn into Stealth Force mode, where your car sprouts a few guns and the wheels point in any direction. They built an entire game around that five second clip in the movie where Bumblebee sprouts a few guns to shoot one bad guy. That's the whole game! How do you get away with that? How does somebody propose making a Transformers game where you never transform and not immediately get their stupid ass fired? The game looks so damn cheap, I guarantee you this Stealth Force bullshit was just so they could save money by not making any robot models. Because there are none. Every single enemy in the game is a car with Stealth Force mode. There is not a single bipedal enemy or character model in the entire game. They're all just generic cars with a few guns duct taped to them. When the characters appear in their robot forms, it's in the cutscenes, which are made out of still images that look hand-drawn. There are maybe three models for enemy vehicles perfection. Starscream starts talking frequently and helps in a boss fight but never actually appears on screen, and the game's 18 levels consist of heavily recycling a pathetic six maps. There might be seven? The city levels are so generic I couldn't tell. There aren't even death animations. The game over screen just comes out of nowhere when your health runs out. It's just impossible not to notice how damn cheap and lazy everything is. The basic combat control is pretty much the same as the Batmobile and Arkham Knight, only slower and with shittier weapons. In car mode, you can drive around with a decent amount of speed but you can't fire weapons, while in stealth force mode you can strafe, turn in place, and generally move with ease, but you move more slowly. Honestly, it controls pretty well. The turning is fluent, the movement controls smoothly, and the shooting is very simple. The game automatically locks onto whatever enemy is in front of you, but it never gets stuck to where you're attacking the wrong enemy. My only problem with the controls is that when you're in the basic car form, you control your movement as if you are walking, and driving without a separate dedicated acceleration button has always felt awkward to me. But the smooth controls are pretty much the one solitary thing that the game gets right. Entering Stealth Force mode uses energy and lots of it, so if you're interested in actually being able to shoot the enemies, you have to keep stopping what you're doing to drive around and collect Energon. It's virtually impossible to avoid getting hit, enemy bullets move at a speed of freaking light, and new enemies spawn constantly. You're almost always being swarmed by enemies, which means you're almost always hemorrhaging health, so even if you have Stealth Force energy, you still have to stop every other minute to hunt down Energon pickups to keep your health up. But that's not all. No matter which character you're using, your basic gunfire fires BBs that barely do any damage. It takes several seconds of concentrated fire to kill any singular enemy, while at least three enemies are attacking you at any given time. The only way to effectively fight the enemies is to use missiles, but you only get ten missiles, and again, new enemies spawn in constantly. So in addition to having to stop every minute to hunt down health, you also have to constantly run away to scavenge missile pickups. Rather than concentrating on fighting enemies, you spend most of the game running away to scavenge all of the pickups needed to make the combat playable, literally so you can have any chance of playing the combat. Most of the levels have you drive through a set of waypoints and you have to drop everything that you're doing every three seconds or so to fight off the enemies swarming you and to hunt down for health and missiles to survive the broken combat. It gets tedious really fast. Not helping the tedium is the fact that there's a grand total of two enemies across the entire game. Normal cars, and normal cars with longer health bars that take two missiles apiece. You spend the entire damn game fighting the same two basic enemies. Even the bosses are just regular enemies with longer health bars. There's no creativity or originality. It at least requires enough effort to stay awake, which is more than can be said for Revenge of the Fallen on the Wii, but that's about it. 
it quickly starts to feel like you're just playing the same damn level over and over again. Get to X number of waypoints while clearing out the never-ending enemies. Every playable character plays the same. You play as Optimus, Bumblebee, Ironhide, Mirage, Lockdown, Soundwave, and Megatron, and apart from Ironhide and Soundwave having a shitty shotgun instead of missiles, I couldn't tell you a damn thing that sets them apart. Hilariously, the worst characters are Optimus and Megatron since they're both noticeably slower than the other characters and they can only carry a piddly ass five missiles apiece. I couldn't have even told you Mirage was in Dark of the Moon since that movie didn't even try to tell you all the characters' names, and I'm damn sure Lockdown wasn't in the movie since a completely different version of him is the focus of the next movie. And while I'm bitching about continuity errors nobody cares about except myself, Megatron still has his tank form from Revenge of the Fallen instead of having the correct form from Dark of the Moon. The game tries to have a little variety in its mission objectives, but it completely fails at it. There's a few levels where you have to protect three generators from enemies, and the damn cockroaches spawn so fast, you're guaranteed to have at least two enemies attacking all three objectives at once, regardless of how efficiently you kill them. There's two stages near the end where you have to take out three objectives within a minute or so of each other, basically requiring a lot of concentrated fire on each objective, but it's just the same tedium of dropping everything to clear out the never-ending enemies and gather up items every five seconds. There's one level where Lockdown has to destroy some gate keys to escape an Autobot base, and you're told to avoid Optimus since he'll curb stomp you. You're led to believe this is some kind of a stealth level, but it's obvious Optimus is always aware of your position. He spends the entire level bum rushing you, and he's too fast to run away from. I swear the only way to beat the level is to stall until you find an invincibility power up, destroy one generator, and repeat. You gotta love how the devs had no ability to program a stealth mission in the Stealth Force Edition. I'd swear the game was supposed to have a turbo boost and the devs just forgot to program it in because there's a level where Lockdown has to drive between waypoints and you get maybe a single second of spare time, and you're supposed to chase down bosses to keep them from healing when they move at the exact same speed as you and you can't catch them. Plus, for some batshit reason, the bosses never die when they run out of health. You have to keep shooting them long after their health hits zero until the damn game registers that they're supposed to be dead. The game's design and mechanics are just so monotonous and bare bones that any attempt at variety just fails miserably. The game's story is virtually non-existent. The Autobots break into a Decepticon base. They find nothing except the name Shockwave. Then the Decepticons break into an Autobot base. They find nothing except that the Autobots know the name Shockwave. At one point, you play as Soundwave collecting all the pieces to revive Devastator, and then you immediately play as Ironhide destroying all the Devastator pieces because both factions share a single time-wasting campaign. The Autobots learn that Megatron is trying to revive Shockwave in a base in Siberia, but before the Autobots can storm the base, Megatron revives Shockwave and they escape. The end. No, that's really the end. The bad guys get away, and the game just ends with Megatron gloating about all the stuff he's going to do in the movie. It doesn't even cut over to the Autobots to resolve any of their shit. The game doesn't even get the final boss right. You fight Megatron as Ironhide on his way out of the base for a shitty fight where nothing's at stake. How is the final boss not Optimus versus Megatron? That's like, a law. It doesn't even attempt to adapt the movie, it just farts out the most pointless prequel since Alien Covenant, in which you quite literally spin your wheels for two hours and not a single damn thing is accomplished. Wait, what's that? How long does it take to play through this non-story and get to the non-ending? My Wii clocked my total playtime as being one hour and 45 minutes. It takes less than two hours to beat the game. The only Wii game I've played that's shorter is Wreck-It Ralph, coincidentally also published by Activision. How in the living hell did they get away with charging $50 for a Transformers game where you can't transform, with no story where you spend the entire game fighting two enemies that clocks in at less than two hours? The only good thing about this game is the title. They warned off Wii owners from playing this shit. There is zero reason to pick up this game unless you're looking for a new benchmark for the laziest damn AAA game in existence. One more movie, one more game. The game licensed on Transformers Age of Extinction. Kind of. Age of Extinction doesn't have a direct tie-in game. Instead, it has Transformers Rise of the Dark Spark, a crossover between the cast of Age of Extinction and the War for Cybertron series, and it's the latter half of that equation that's the main issue. Transformers War for Cybertron and Fall of Cybertron are not only regarded as the best Transformers games ever made, admittedly not a high watermark, but High Moon Studios series is beloved among the Transformers fandom as being one of the best adaptations the franchise has ever had. The series was super successful 
successful, critically acclaimed, and then Rise of the Dark Spark happened. Publisher Activision handed the third game in the series to a completely different dev team, Edge of Reality. They rushed the game's production to release alongside Age of Extinction. The game was so rushed that most of its assets and levels were recycled from previous War for Cybertron games, and when the predictable happened and Rise of the Dark Spark tanked, Activision cancelled the War for Cybertron series. Because apparently Activision, who has more money than God because its customers have to repurchase the same damn game every year to keep with the current online multiplayer, couldn't afford to let a single underperforming game that they had extensively boned go unpunished. A beloved franchise was torpedoed overnight by Activision's sheer greed and stupidity. I haven't played either War for Cybertron game. Again. Thanks for that, Activision. So I'm going into this with a little bit more objectivity. The game sucks to fans of the series, let's see if it sucks to an outsider too. The game begins with a meteor crashing to Earth. The movie Autobots, Optimus Prime, Bumblebee, and Drift go to investigate. There were five Autobots in the movie, but Crosshairs and Hound aren't so much as mentioned, so they could save time and money on modeling them. They find the Dark Spark, an evil counterpart to the Matrix of Leadership that grants immense power to its user. Lockdown gets the Dark Spark and time freezes the world! I was frozen today! But rather than kill the helpless only three Autobots who exist on Earth, or capture Optimus, which was the entire reason he was on Earth in the movie, he just leaves while gloating about how great his evil plan is. The game then cuts over to the War for Cybertron universe as Shockwave, Starscream, and Soundwave also steal the Dark Spark from an ancient vault. Both teams of Autobots must then contend with their enemies, now armed with an inconceivable power, as the fate of two worlds lies in the balance. Rise of the Dark Spark is a third-person shooter, and it's one of the most bland, basic third-person shooters you'll ever see. The enemies have dumb AI and do little more than spawn of the other side of the room and wander around. They have no tactics, they never flank you, and when they charge you they move so slowly you can pick them off with ease. The levels are uninspired sequences of empty corridors and empty kill rooms with sporadic cover, all the more reason to resort to long-range combat as often as possible. The gameplay often just devolves into shooting at generic targets from across the room, only ducking away to recover your shield every now and then. The gameplay never evolves beyond pretty basic target practice. Stand in one general area, firing at everything until the room's clear and you can move on. It's at least better than the endless litany of Gears of War clones because there's no cover system and you need to stay mobile to avoid enemy fire, so the gameplay at least has more energy than some examples of the genre. I swear 80% of my deaths were just from getting impatient and trying to advance too quickly through a room. You move so slowly you can't reliably survive close range fire, and enemy melee attacks kill you in like two seconds. Plus the camera zooms in so far I kept getting punched to death from off screen before I knew what the hell happened. The game runs like utter shit, with muddy textures everywhere that take forever to pop in. Try to count how long it takes to render your vehicle correctly every time that you transform, and the frame rate runs akin to PowerPoint if more than a few enemies are around. The technical limitations mean enemies never spawn in large enough numbers for hectic fights. Seriously. This is a mainstream studio release. This is pathetic. The game tries to have some variety to its enemies with rocket launcher enemies, some snipers, enemies who shoot at you while clinging on walls, and titans that spawn shielding orbs you have to shoot before they take damage, but the idiotic AI makes them all behave exactly the same. No matter the enemy, they just stand off in the distance shooting whatever sort of projectiles at you. Even the shotgunners, who you'd think would want to be in close range so they could actually hit you, just seem to walk back and forth and effectually spraying fire around. It's just not real variety. No matter the enemy type, they're all just generic targets you shoot from across the room. The really different enemies are just infuriating. There's about three fights with flying drones who are too small and too fast to hit with any of the weapons and wreck your shit, and you spend two straight levels fighting Insecticons that are small, fast, and seem to have abysmal hit detection. I often resorted to punching the bugs to death because none of my weapons would consistently hit them. About the only thing the game has in its favor is the weapon selection. There are nine light weapons, nine heavy weapons, you can carry one of each, and you can customize your loadout using consoles through the levels. But I made an honest attempt to use each weapon at least once and most of them felt totally useless. Almost all of the combat is long range, which renders three or four of the weapons, like the acid puddle gun and the shotgun that scatters bullets so why you can't hit dick, almost entirely useless. There's two machine guns that scatter bullets so badly you can barely land a hit on anything, and the third machine gun shoots straight but has shit damage. 
damage output. Ditto for the throwback blaster that makes G1 sounds but barely does any damage. The lightning gun burns through way too much ammo. There are two sniper rifles that require you to stand out in the open so every enemy can concentrate fire on you. I tried that a grand total of once and died three times in a row. And then there's the gun that switches enemies over to your side so that they can sit behind one piece of cover doing jack shit to help you until the gun wears off. Hey, you get your ass back here! But eventually I found a handful of guns that were pretty fun to use. The Path Blaster fires like a pistol but has the damage output of a small bazooka, and once I found it I used it every single level. The Sling Shock fires exploding bolas that are easy to aim and deal great damage, the Thermo Rocket Cannon fires homing missiles that never miss their targets and is pretty much the only thing that works on flying enemies, and the Chaos Rift Combustor fires a cluster grenade that can kill an entire room of enemies in one shot! Papa Nike. You can transform mostly any time that you want, but the vehicles act the same as the Stealth Force mode from the last game, you move and control exactly the same as you do on foot. The only reason to use the vehicle form is the vehicles have weapons that don't suck. The levels quickly become monotonous because there's no real variety to the enemies or characters. You fight effectively the same enemies every level, the characters all feel the same because of the custom loadouts, even the flying characters feel the same because the level design is so bland you barely get any cool use out of the flying. They try to make the characters distinct by adding some special abilities, but all of them are either useless or barely work, the lone exceptions being Optimus' shield and Drift's insanely broken teleportation attack that one-shots every enemy ahead of him at once. The only level Levels that felt distinct to me were the levels with Swindle and Jetfire because their vehicle forms have ridiculously overpowered weapons. Swindle has rockets that kill basically everything in one hit, and Jetfire has Gatling guns with unlimited ammo that actually shoot straight so you can sit back raining fire on a map where the enemies can't hit you. They're broken, yeah, but they're fun to use and they compel you to play the game differently. Even the levels where you play as gigantic characters Bruticus and Grimlock don't add much variety. You just stand in one place, essentially in god mode, slaughtering endless waves of enemies wondering when the damn level is going to end, with stiff and awkward controls on top of that. Although I did really like Grimlock's second level where you rampage through a city, mainly because the level has actual pacing and urgency. A damn rarity in this tedious grind, you can really tell the developers didn't give any portion of a rat's ass about the earth levels, they have significantly less variety to the enemies, the earth levels are consistently about half the length of the Cybertron missions, and the enemies all have a single voice with two or three voice clips they parrot endlessly. This makes Grimlock's levels hilarious because as you massacre several enemies at a time, you'll often get two enemies repeating the same line in stereo. Rise of the Dark Spark isn't a terrible game, it's just mediocre. The combat is extremely basic with little enemy variety, bland levels, characters that all feel the same, and lousy AI, but it controls well, the lack of forced cover mechanics makes the combat stimulating enough that I was never bored, and some of the weapons are so cool they make the combat fun for a while, but I don't play a whole lot of shooters, and I could easily see a more seasoned player getting bored shitless with this bland across the board, no unique ideas game that does absolutely nothing to stand out in an overcrowded genre. Honestly, the only major problem I had with the game was the storyline, which has glacial pacing, no compelling characters, and frequently stops dead for long stretches of padding. The story is what really pushed mediocre gameplay over the edge into being really tedious and really boring. After a tutorial with the movie cast, the game cuts over to the core three Decepticons retrieving the Dark Spark. You spend the next four levels, over a quarter of the entire campaign, just taking the Dark Spark back to Megatron. Sideswipe and Ironhide steal it, Shockwave immediately steals it back, and Sharpshot and Swindle escort Shockwave to Megatron's fortress. And that's all that happens for two straight hours. Even when Megatron gets the Dark Spark, nothing happens because Cliff Jumper gets captured and you spend two levels rescuing his useless ass while nothing plot relevant happens. Because it's not like Megatron getting his hands on the Transformers Infinity Gauntlet is an urgent problem or anything, we can put that on hold to rescue one incompetent sniper. Finally, after six straight chapters and about three straight hours of tedious ass boring padding, Optimus storms Megatron's stronghold and battles him in the Dark Spark. Also, Edge of Reality recycled the wrong model when they were rummaging through Fall of Cybertron's files, and Megatron has the rebuilt body that won't exist until midway through the next game.
You fight Megatron, and all he does with the Dark Sparks unlimited power of the universe is revive a few dead Autobots as Decepticon goons with brittle bone disease that die in a few hits. It's like having a Swiss Army knife and only using the spoon. Instead of actually fighting Megatron, you blow up a few machines, which somehow stops him. The Dark Spark flies off into space for no reason. And then, so abruptly, I think I got Whiplash, it cuts over to the Earthcast after three to four hours and eight straight chapters of them not having been mentioned once. Bumblebee and Drift spend three levels poking around some random base that Lockdown visited for some reason. They don't find Squat. Drift gets captured because he's kind of stupid and Bumblebee has to save him. And I could swear I just did this an hour ago rescuing Cliff Jumper. And then Grimlock appears out of nowhere with zero explanation or prior mention to rescue them both, confusing the shit out of anybody who hasn't seen the movie. Lockdown goes to a city for some reason, and Grimlock plows through the city to reach him. And then the final level is Optimus going through the second base that Lockdown has visited for some reason. So the Earth levels are four straight chapters of poking around anonymous locations with no objectives or goals, generally having no idea what the hell you're doing. Would it surprise any of you to hear that the War for Cybertron cast has not been seen or mentioned once since we cut back over to the movie cast? I don't think Edge of Reality understands how a damn crossover is supposed to work. When you get to Lockdown, he finally explains what the hell's been happening in the Earth levels. Megatron and all the Decepticons died in Dark of the Moon, Lockdown is bummed that his best customer died, so he's built a time bridge to revive the Decepticons and keep the war going so he can make lots of money off of it. So once again, the all-powerful Dark Spark needs a ton of external machinery to actually do anything. But yes, Lockdown's entire plan, which drives the entire story, is that he wants to revive Megatron and the Decepticons. Yeah, anyone who's actually sat through that movie care to point out the problem with Lockdown's plan? Um, I got a problem with that. For one, Megatron is already resurrected. Secondly, where you're gonna get the ability to create sparks out of thin air. Lockdown? I hate to tell you, but your plan is bullshit. How about you use that little bit of a dark power of yours and make a movie actually worth watching? You might be able to pull off make getting an actual good Transformer movie made. You know, one with actual plot and less humans, less really, really, really annoying humans. One without Michael Bay, hopefully. And one where Megatron doesn't play a bitch. Maybe have Megatron be his own person instead of being, I don't know, used by the Fallen and used by Sentinel Prime. That would be good. That would be wonderful. You might want to check to see the status of your leader and see if he's really dead. Anyway, that's just from local Decepticon fan, Taya. Thank you, sweetie. Megatron and all of the Decepticons were already revived by humans in Age of Extinction. Hell, Stinger, one of the revived Decepticons, even appears at Lockdown's base in the game. Lockdown's entire plan is to revive people who are already alive. The entire game's plot is completely freaking pointless. And yes, I know the game is shilled as a prequel to Age of Extinction, but nothing in the rest of the game lines up with the game being a prequel. I'm rushed for time, but just one of the innumerable examples, Grimlock doesn't join the Autobots until the end of the movie, and is supposed to be imprisoned on Lockdown's ship during the game's time frame. Why shoehorn in the movie characters into a War for Cybertron game if you're going to actively contradict the movie's canon every single chance that you get? The fight with Lockdown is really tedious. The only way to kill him is to use nothing but Optimus' shield, and he whoops your ass if you try anything else. You're given no hint about this, so you just die a lot until you figure it out. Well, maybe Lockdown's time portal is how the War for Cybertron and Age of Extinction casts finally mate one another. Nope. You destroy the time bridge before it can do anything. Lockdown runs away, and the game ends. This crossover ends with neither side even aware of the other's existence. So, let me get this straight. They crowbarred the movie cast into the third War for Cybertron game and then rushed the game to launch with the movie for a crossover that didn't even happen? Why in Megatron's perpetually clenched metal asshole did this need to be a crossover then? There was absolutely zero reason to hijack the third War for Cybertron game and turn it into a slapdash Age of Extinction tie-in. Nobody was asking for a crossover with the most reviled Transformers adaptation in existence, and the games were selling fine without needing to leech off the movies. The War for Cybertron series died for nothing, hijacked and doomed for a crossover that didn't happen, throwing in the movie characters with completely 
completely pointless, half-baked, blatantly lazy levels that barely even have a story, don't even slightly die into the movie, and had absolutely no reason to be in the game to begin with. Rise of the Dark Spark isn't an awful game, but the gameplay is mediocre and the story is boring, and its legacy of bringing a beloved franchise crashing down with it is the only noteworthy thing about the entire game. Why am I not surprised we Transformers games 0 for 4? Not quite done yet, though, because Nintendo did get some good Transformers games. You just have to know where to look.